Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a little video for you on, it's basically a how-to. Okay, I was doing some late night crafting last night, I needed some larger journal cards for a project I'm working on, and part of the way through I went, Kerry you're a fool. Your subscribers are going to ask you, how did you do them, and is there a video to go with them? So I thought, right, this morning, reasonably early this morning, not too early, um, I thought I'd just remake some of these, because... I could do it twice as many instead of the amount that I've got. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to explain things as I go along. I'm going to show you. Hopefully I can keep it close to an hour long. But to be honest with you, I don't know how long this is going to take. I may have to speed up some sections. Right, so I've got a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock here. I have a whole pile of cardstock that is not my style. I'm probably never going to use for anything else. So I tend to use it for projects like this. So it's an old piece of 12 by 12 it was white on the back but I've already collaged it with scraps of coffee dye paper and bits of book in here as well so I've done that because I really don't think you need to see that done so this is what I'm going to be collaging, collaging onto and I need to remember that the collage is the background it's not the foreground so that's what we're looking at um I recently got this magazine and this pack of 85 design papers was in the back of it. And this is the design papers I'm going to use and I'll explain why as we go along. Oh, and when you finish with this, don't forget you, you can pluck out these strips and get extra elements from it. So I'm going to use those craft papers and these are the ones I was using last night and I'm going to stick with the same ones because I want to stay within the theme of the ones I've already done because they're potentially all going into the same project or series of projects. I've got a ruler with me that I'm going to tear against. I've got my scraper and I've got the Pritt stick which I normally use and I've got a glue book. So let's move all of that into shop for you. So first things first, I'm just going to get stuff down. Um, because that's what it needs to be. And I'm going to look for pieces that have got natural corners. Those who follow me will know you don't normally see me using um, digitals, although I do use digital labels. And it's not because I don't like digitals. I absolutely love digitals. However, my printer is not the best printer in the world. Um, I should really get a new printer at some point in my life, but... If it's not broke, I don't fix it, if that makes sense to anyone. Um, my printer works fine. It does everything I need it to do. And I I don't print digitals that often. So I'm like, I don't really want to go to the expense of getting another printer to actually use for printing digitals when, in truth, I'm probably not going to use it that often. Now, if someone sends me... Um, pre-printed digitals, more than happy to use them, but they're just not, not really my thing, to be honest with you. Um, I love them, but as I said, the, the printer I've got, which is a Hewlett Packard printer, prints beautifully, but it's I just find that if I'm using it with glues or anything like that, the ink smears sometimes, even on labels, I find that the ink doesn't seem to set enough, so... So there you go. But I do use things like Tracy Fox labels. I print those off. I've got um, some labels that I use for when I do December dailies. I will sometimes use um, digitals for that, for putting page numbers or dates on stuff. Uh, things like that. But yes, yeah, so I do like a good digital. And I absolutely am always blown away by the standard of artistic oh don't leave that next to the other green do I? the artistic design that the digital manufacturers or creators come up with it's just you get the idea so what i do is when i see things like those craft magazines i showed you and they've got like a special offer or something within them i tend to just grab for them because i know there's a whole bunch of papers in there that i probably wouldn't have chosen in the first place, which pushes me outside my comfort zone, which is always a good thing. Um, it also means that um, I get, they're all printed on quality paper or paper that's a better quality print than I would do. Now, let me explain a few things how I'm doing. I am just tearing squares and rectangles to create my collage. I tend to collage from the edges inwards. I tend to collage from the corners first and then fill in the rest. 
Um, that's not a hard and fast rule for anybody. It's just the way my brain is wired and it's the way that for me it takes out the thought process. I can just enjoy creating. Also you'll see the majority of the time I will take three pieces of each scrapbook paper and actually just pop those down. We'll find a piece where that fits so it's not going to be too obviously next to that. Um, so I tend to do things in threes um, and stick them down and I tend to use the rule of threes or at least odd numbers in a lot of the stuff I create for no other reason than it just it's aesthetically more pleasing to the eye. So, right, I intend getting um, five journal cards out of this 12 by 12, so that'll give you some idea of the size. Now, as you've seen in a recent video, my book pages do not get thrown away. They get utilized for other stuff. So, right, it's one more piece of this. I'd quite like to add it up here, maybe. So I'm moving quite quickly. Hopefully I'm in shot for all of this. I'm more focused on what I'm doing, to be honest, than looking through the lens at this moment in time. So forgive me if I do drop out a shot occasionally. I, another thing I tend to do when I'm collaging is I try not to overlap things too much because that makes it a little bit uneven or bumpy and lumpy. Do you know what I mean? This was one of the pages. I actually quite like this page. So I'm going to add a piece or two of that down because it really worked for me last time. Actually, I might put it in there. How far off is that? Sorry, I do talk to myself even when you're not here. I tend to talk to myself when I'm creating. It's just part of my thought process. Now, if you can't fully see the glue book and what I'm gluing down, I really think at this point in our lives, you don't necessarily need to see me gluing stuff. Um, I think all of that is quite self-explanatory. So, there you go. Um, the one thing I do note about things that come with magazines, and that is sometimes the paper is wonderful, but sometimes the paper will not so much tear as it will mark quite easily. So, just be aware of that if you're using papers that come from a magazine. Um, let's put that over the other side of there. So, there you go. So, hopefully you're all doing really well. Um, I'm going to put this in the how to use 12 by 12 um, playlist. Purely because I'm using a 12 by 12. <laughs> I mean... I, it's not the only way I use 12 by 12s certainly not the only way I use 12 by 12s as as that playlist will show you. However, um, it's probably one of the ones I use quite often. Now, we know it's a background. I'm going to cover up things in this, so I'm not hugely worried that it looks marvellous. It just needs to be... It needs to be something... That's quite a pretty one. Might have a bit of, bit of this edge down there. Um, that's another thing about, um, oh, that's quite nice as well, I wonder, it's double sided this one, I always keep forgetting to turn it over, um, that's another thing about um, store bought paper pads and collections, is all of the colours are meant to work together, um, which they obviously do, well they do a lot of the time anyway, right, I'm just going to stick that one in there, so yeah, my aim is to quickly do this, then cut it up, which hopefully it'll be dry enough to cut. I sometimes, if things are damp, they don't cut as well, but that doesn't overly bother me. Um, I'm trying to stay in squares and rectangles purely because that's just what pleases me. Um, does it bother me that this line is on an angle and it's not perfectly straight? No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. Um, because I know that there's tons and tons of other layers going on top of this. Because um, for those of you who watch my um, gel plate videos where I make backgrounds, and I'm always saying use loads and loads of layers, I'm exactly like that when it comes to doing collage as well. I do lots and lots of layers in collage, which I might just slide that over a bit. 
and down. I'm going to strip, snip any edges that are sticking over afterwards. Right, that didn't stick down very well there. Why didn't you stick down? Probably because I was talking too much and didn't put it down. Right, I'm getting closer to the centre, so if I add this in, it's probably going to be too close to those things. Now, I did quite like this. I, was, I didn't look at the other side of this page. And I think I'm going to take a piece of this off here. Let's take the other one off while I'm here. Now, anything that is smaller than about this size, um, like the scraps I've been generating, will just go into my scrap bin. Um, and I'll use them for future projects because that's what we all do. And that's definitely what I do. Let's take that bit off there. Oh, that didn't tear straight, did it? Keeping the pressure down on your ruler really helps when you're doing this. Which I sometimes try to work too quickly. I, I actually forget to do stuff like that. I'm gonna put that right across there. Um, you may note that I'm using reasonably large pieces when I, am I running out of loose stick? I feel like I'm running out of loose stick. Um, when I do these 12 by 12 collage pieces, um, purely because, as I said, there's umpteen different things going to be on the surface. So it doesn't overly bother me that, let's pull this down a bit, excuse me, I, mean, I need to see what I'm actually doing for once. I have that sticking over a bit. I don't mind going over there, that's fine. Stick that one down. Now I quite like that blue. What do I do with the rest of this piece? I'm wondering whether this is too linear. I think I need something upwards. So let's just take that chunk off there and put this piece down. So um, what was I trying to say? Yeah, so I tend to use bigger pieces for my background because as you'll see with my process, I will be adding lots and lots and lots of little bits on the front of it. So again, just my my creative bent, should we call it. It's just the way I like to do things. I'd like that to be a bit closer to there as well. Thank you. So one thing I do hate about a glue stick is I get really sticky. Yeah, this isn't a filthy cloth. It's a cloth that's been stained by paint. So. Yeah, it's good to keep a damp cloth on hand when you're doing glue. Right, turn that one more time. I do tend to turn whatever I'm working on, no matter whatever medium I'm working on, I tend to rotate stuff. And I do that so that I'm always working from different directions. Now, I do have a couple of little elements that came off previously on the last lot. So I'll put those down in a bit. Oh, I actually wonder whether... Hmm... That might end up down there. But when you end up with little spaces, sometimes it's perfect just to drop something in. Right, and I did have, I quite like the idea of this in here. Um, it's a bit spring, but that's not a problem with me. Roll on spring. Spring and autumn are possibly my favourite times of year. Absolutely my favourite times of year. Um, I don't mind the cold, but I'm not not too happy about the depths of winter. Um, I wonder whether I put that right in the middle there. I might put that right in the middle there. Uh, I'm not overly fond of the total depths of winter, mm -hmm. and I don't deal well with the heat. Never been fond of the heat. Yeah, I did run out of glue stick. Right, let's grab another glue stick. Here we go, brand new glue stick. There you go. Um, so I've never been a person who really likes the heat. Mind you saying that when I worked um, for Princess Cruises as a dancer, I spent most of my time in the Caribbean. What you don't know is I spent most of my time not on the deck, but actually in the confines of the ship, because that's where the best air conditioning was. Um, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't enjoy the heat. It's it's not a me thing, should we say? Oh, it was meant to go there, wasn't it? So now, why the bigger journal cards? Um, if I'm doing a journal that's got like belly bands in it or full page pockets, I always need large journal cards. And out of habit, and I think it's a habit a lot of us may be in, we tend to make smaller pieces than larger pieces. 
Um, is that too much there, do you think? I think it might be, but I do quite like the idea of having a piece down here. Um, so yeah, we have a tent, well, I say we like it's the royal we. Um, I tend to make smaller pieces um, and forget about the bigger pieces, but time and place for everything, and I discovered that I was running low. So there you go, I'll stick that one in there. Right, so just a couple of little places to go. Let's see what we've got. I don't need that. Now I didn't put three of those in, but now might be the opportunity to reintroduce. If I put a large piece across there. Check it all the way across there. That seems like quite a lot. Let's take a piece off there. I don't want to build up too many overlaps because, as I said before, they make the surface a bit lumpy and bumpy. And, and it just doesn't... It's not the greatest look, should we say. Let's add this little one in here. I'd like it to overlap a couple. There's my card gone. So now you could, if you wished, um, come in and do this. Right, it's a little bit here that I can see the 12 by 12 underneath it. So this is the perfect opportunity to use up this little scrap. Now you could, if you've got some time free and you're just in the mood to do something, I will very often just pull out my scrap drawer and make these. I won't cut them up, I won't do anything else with them, I will just literally make these. I do need to find one more piece, and I'm looking at this green. Ooh, I forgot about this bit. No, I think I'm going to stick with the green, which is the original idea. So, let's take a piece of this green off. Because I don't need a huge amount of it. Hopefully the tearing of paper isn't bothering anyone, but as we're all crafters here, or artists, I'm sure we're used to that noise. Let's just stick another piece there. Right, let's get this glued down, and then we can take a little bit of a look where I want to put those couple of elements that I selected. Let's put this around here. So as you can see, I'm not really thinking about this. I'm just sticking stuff down. The fact that I'm having a full-on conversation with you guys just tells you I'm not that focused on what I'm doing as far as sticking stuff down. Because it's just, as Diane Reevely says, it's a background because it's a background. Um, backgrounds are not meant to be a foreground. You're not supposed to be overpowered. Now, I'm slightly annoyed that I've got dots next to dots but in the bigger picture that's probably not going to be a problem right so i've got the background down let's pull that page over a bit now i do have some elements i might want to put in i quite like that i quite like that b maybe i'll save these and maybe i'll use them later so i'm not forcing myself to put those on right these are going to go over to one area just so they're out of my area Right, leave, put the lid on the glue stick. So I'm just going to come in and trim off any excess pieces. Now normally at this point I would take a break and let everything dry fully because I do know that if I try and cut things with my guillotine it's probably not going to cut cleanly because um, I've got wet glue. But I'm willing to take the risk for you guys. Okay. We'll see how it goes. I mean, there's nothing that can't be repaired. Let's put it that way. That looks like it needs a trim as well. Now, I am not doing anything in this video that's any different to anyone else that I've seen on YouTube. This is just part of my process. So, right, we've got our background ready to go. Now I need to cut this up. As I said, fingers crossed that my guillotine is going to cut this properly because I don't really want to mess this one up. So I use a guillotine, not a trimmer, purely out of choice. And I'm going to cut it not blind. I'm going to cut it so I'm looking because I really want to see the sections I'm cutting up. Now I want to cut this at seven and a half. This is just my choices, by the way. Seven and a half, which 
works out fine. I'm going to remove it just a little fraction over so I don't decapitate that. And hopefully my trimmer will go through. Yeah, that was fine. Now this one obviously is 12, so I'm going to cut this at four inch segments. So it's one. That's two. Right, so I've got a seven and a half by four, seven and a half by four, seven and a half by four. Now what I'm seeing here is this little bit here is going to come off anyway, so I'm just going to run my thumb over. The glue's still wet, I've taken it off, there's no problem. Right, now I've got this one here. Now I can cut this one, because again it's 12, so I'm going to cut this one in half, which is six. I'm just going to take the edge off here, because I don't think I glued correctly up to the edge there, and it's showing a little bit. How about that one? That one needs as well. This is the time to just trim and tidy up, guys. I can get a far sharper edge if I use my guillotine than actually if I use my scissors. I'm going to come in and just trim that bit off. So I'm just doing a bit of housekeeping, just making sure that all of the edges, like along here, there's a little bit of a rough edge. I know you're going to go, Kerry, but can hardly see that. I know, but I can see it. Um, that one looks okay. That one looks okay. Right, away with the guillotine. And away with the scraps. So what I tend to do now is I do things very mass make or I do them very methodically. Um, and that's what you're going to see me doing now. So... I will lay out my stuff on the work surface, hopefully it'll all be in shot, and I will let these dictate which orientation they're in. So these butterflies are that way up, so it's going to be that way. This butterfly is that way up, this butterfly is that way up. That little bit doesn't bother me, it's probably going to get covered up. So I am not 100% certain you're going to see everything in screen, but I will do my darndest to try and keep things relatively where you can see them. Mm. So I'll slide that over. Sorry guys, I did zoom my camera in a bit closer in the hopes that I'd be able to show you everything. If I didn't, please forgive me. I can only do so much with the setup I've got. Right, let's get this out of the way because I need a clean sheet of paper. So my first process um, when I'm doing this, I've laid them out and they will stay in that orientation while I'm working on them, unless I have something that I have to do specifically. First thing I'll do is use some book page. I've got an old encyclopedia, an old Oxford dictionary. I grab one of these and I literally just tear a page out. Um, so I don't really care what's written on the page unless this is a specific topic. Say it's... I'm just taking the edges off while we're, while we're talking. Um, if this was... Um, right, it's February. So if this, this was Valentine's Day, I would probably look through the dictionary and tear out pages that had words like um, heart, romance, love, marriage, partnership, friendship. Those are the sort of things I'd see. So if you did look into the background, you may see something that was unexpected. I think I can cut this bit down a little bit. So I'm going to just come in and I'm going to tear. Um, nothing rocket science here. I'm just going to literally tear stuff down and just lay it down. I'm also something else I do as well is I tend to... Is that going to cover that up completely? Yeah, let's do something different with this. Um, I tend to not... Um, so I'm struggling to speak and think. Um, I tend to stick things down um, as I go. I don't tend to lay it all out nicely. These little bits will just go into my scrap box. Here's another piece I was going to look at. Let's just tear that off there. I'm not hugely picky about how I do stuff. I just get it down. Uh, let's pop that over there. Right, so that's the only one without a piece. I've got a bit of my scrap. Oh, actually, I want a taller piece, so let's just 
tear half a page out of here. Slice that off there. I'm just going to tear the edges. Now, um, when it comes to book page, it can be quite fragile, which is why I always stick it down with a glue stick because I find it then gives me more coverage, more contact. Right, let's get some of this stuff down. So, um, I also don't um, distress the edges of my papers. I do distress the edges of my journal cards when they're finished. Uh, basically because, as Gail Augustinelli would say, um, it just frames out your work. And I believe Tim Holtz has started saying that now, so I'm wondering whether Tim watches Gail occasionally. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So that's that bit down. Let's get this bit down as well. Sorry, I know my glue book is definitely out of shot for this, but I thought you'd appreciate more seeing the journal cards as they develop than actually seeing me gluing bits of paper. So I do do um, I do go through a lot of glue books when I work, but as you've seen, I do recycle my pages. And sometimes, if I'm doing a three-dimensional project, I will even make paper mache out of old book pages as well, just because that's a useful thing to do. Right, slide that up there. There you go. This little bit on here. I'm beginning to stick to the pages. I think I may have to stop in a second just to get my fingers washed off because I'm going to be stuck to everything because there's quite a bit of glue in to go here. So bear with me, I'm just going to hit pause on this because my hands are really sticky. I've got to go wash my hands. Right, back again. Unsticky fingers now. It just frustrates me if I can't catch hold of stuff and move it around. Okay, right. Um, let's turn the book this way. Maybe that will help. So we've got some book page on there. The next thing I normally do is I will probably come in with um, things like washi tape next. Now, I don't tend to put my focal point on or even decide what my focal point is until I've completely and utterly finished my background. And then I put my focal point on and then I might add one or two little bits of an enhancement onto it. But the next step for me is washi tape. Now I pulled in some wider washi tape before you all contact me and say, where did you get it from? Um, it's from Etsy. I, I, I tend to buy washi tape quite often when I see it. Oh, that's a nice bit. Um, whenever I see it and I will just buy it and use it and add it to my pile. I have no idea because I've got quite a stash of washi tape purely because I do use it. It's a great way of adding color and detail that a lot of the time is not dominant. I mean, it's not gonna knock your socks off, but it is gonna give some visual texture in the background. So I'm just gonna pop that down there. Um, I do, as you may have noticed, add glue stick to my um, washi tape, that's because I don't trust washi tape. I've had washi tape come off before now. Now, if I'm making something for myself, maybe it's not so much of a problem. But if I'm making something as a gift for someone else, then I will definitely glue it down. Right, that's the first piece on there. Um, this is a really pretty one. I can't remember where I got this from. I'm wondering whether there's anywhere on here that might benefit from a little bit more. Actually, let's take this piece off. I can use that somewhere else and then I'm going to just take this bit out of here because that's got a really nice element that might go in really nicely across there so yeah washi tape is a wonderful thing I love it um, I do have decorative trims which are similar to washi tape and I've actually got a digital of those on my um, my Etsy store um, I made them out on my gel press my gel plates so that means that they're very painty but I tend to print them out onto um, label plate paper cut them into strips but this isn't a project that I would use these on because this isn't the theme for the arty arty stuff that I'm doing right 
looking at this one quite like this one as far as this and it's got a butterfly on it hopefully i'm in shot i get a little paranoid about being in and out of shot because when i'm watching other youtubers i get very frustrated if they're busily talking away and haven't even realized that they're not in shot now we know my glue book isn't in shot i mean i've addressed that because to be honest with you i'm hoping you're more interested in how these are developing than my gluing abilities that was a good choice for that that really pulled the color through from that butterfly um, i'm snipping off the edges i could wrap them around but i like the backs as they are so right that's that bit down now each of them's going to get a piece of washi tape as i said i'm systematic i work my way through right this is another nice washi tape I wish I knew where I got all my washi tapes from, but as I said, very often, if say I'm traveling and I find a craft shop, I will pop in. Well, I always pop in. Why wouldn't I pop in? Um, I always pop into craft shops and art supply shops when I'm traveling. And oh, I think I want that piece out of there. And if I see something that attracts my attention, you yeah, got it. I bought it. So, and that's kind of how I get the majority of my washi tapes is I literally build up my supply as I'm moving around. Also, I do get sent washi tapes as part of happy mail occasionally or gifts. Um, some of my crafty friends really know that I like washi tapes. I guess, well, I get washi tape gifts quite often. Right, that's got it. This needs something. I was thinking this one though. that'll work now it may seem a little random the way i'm working but to me there is a system within this so right, this says c and sure i don't think i want that one i quite like this one have i ever used oh, i have used this one right so washy 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 okay it's just that one to go and i don't mind that there's text on that what's it say fleur I would have thought it would have been Flora, but Flora is okay with me. So I think we're just going to... Oops, don't stick there. Stick there. Just pick this up, just make sure I slide everything in the right direction. So, as you can see, each of them now has washi tape on it somewhere. That's part of the process I do. Um, I like it. It just adds another decorative layer to everything. Right. Let's fold it up so I'll stick my hand in it. So washi tape is now done. Now I will probably look for something maybe like um, a ticket or a label or a number. So as far as numbers go, I tend to... Um, either stamp my own which is what these are um, or I'll snip them off things um, so that's what I'm going to use they're just rubber stamped onto strips of coffee dyed paper I like them they're easy to use I can just pop them down um, this is however something I will use distressing on the edges of purely because it frames it out it helps it stand out so I'm not even thinking I'm literally just pulling numbers out one, two, three, four. I need five of them. So I'm just going to pull them off the top. Um, I don't know why I work like this. I just know that for me, it's much more productive. I can I can get a lot done in a short amount of time. Um, and I don't know about you, but life is really, really busy. One, two, three, four. Let's grab this one as well. Life is really, really busy. And if I'm making ephemera... Um, if I'm going to make one piece, why make one piece when I can make several pieces? So I do tend to mass make very often. Right, that's some numbers. So we will revisit things afterwards because it's not just numbers that I use. Right, let's grab these. Right, this has got a bit of red on it. And the only one that's got anywhere near red on is this one. So I'm just going to come in. Let's pull this down so you can see. Pop that in that top corner. 
Okay, another layer of something. Right, this one's quite dark. Hmm, he's on that one. Um, I don't know why I'm putting them down where I'm putting them, guys. I'm literally one of these people who goes absolutely by my instincts. As you probably are well aware of me now, especially when it comes to colour combinations. Knock your glue over Griffiths. Right, this one will go nicely on there. At the end, obviously, I will lift all of these up to show you. Spinning them around is not the best of ideas. So just in case that was out of shot, I just put that at the top. Just snip that little edge off there. Right, so I've got two left. I think this one really does feel like this one. And I think it's going to go right across there. Get rid of this page into the bucket. And then this last one will have to go onto this one because that's the only one left to do. Where do I want to put it there? Maybe that top corner, actually. I quite like putting numbers in corners. Um, I'll need to snip off the edge, but I'm okay with that. Just pop that onto there. Having it straight would be a good idea. Snip the edge off. Will I remember? Or else I won't remember. So, right. Where are we up to? Let's put that back where it was before. So I've now got numbers on things. I will probably come in with tickets and labels in a little bit. Um, I think it's we're about at the point now where I now need to think, right, let's pull in some focal points. Um, and I have no mind as to what the focal points are going to be. I've pulled out a myriad of things that we're going to look at. I think one of these probably needs to be a butterfly. So let's address the butterfly in the room. So I've just got this tin of pre-cut and fussy cut butterflies just to have a look through and see if I can just pull one out at impulse. That's quite a big one, isn't it? That's too big. Um, is that too dark? That looks too dark. Um, I don't normally decorate stuff on on video and part of the reason for that is guys I take a long time to do it actually there's a label I wonder whether I can that would go perfect on there right so just going to sit that on there and I'm going to call that done for butterflies let's put that out of sight um, let's pull in one of my ephemera folders. Now, this ephemera folder I have had several of you, so I'm going to move these out of the way and then I'll pull them back in in a bit. I've had several of you ask, can I show how I made this? I made this years ago. I'm going to have to revisit my thought process as far as this goes, but I, I will attempt this year to get this video done. So I've got these little stamps that I made. Well, stamps, they're, they're like toppers. If you're a card maker, you call them a topper. Um, I'm thinking that one's quite nice, actually. That will go on there. I will show you where I put them. Um, it's just as I said, I only have so much screen space. Right, let's move on. I don't want flower labels. Butterflies, I like, I like, I like these butterfly things. What it did, I think there might be a video of it actually. This was a napkin of butterflies and I glued them onto a book page, cut them around the edges and then I've got these ready to go. So I quite like these. One, two, three, four, five. I don't mind two on one. They're going to go leave that one out because I think there is a home for it. I just haven't discovered the home yet. Oh, actually there's the tall one. Actually, I'm going to put this one back because I think that one's just found a home for itself. Right, moving on from butterflies, eggs. Now, I was thinking about putting 
an egg onto one of these. Not because it's Easter, because it's certainly not Easter. Now maybe it's just a bit too quirky, unless I stick a bird on there as well. Um, Mm, not feeling that. I'm really, really running low in my ephemera book. I need to, I need to spend some time. Well, not only making a new ephemera book, but actually spending some time um, sorting ephemera out because I'm running low. I've got these washi stickers. I think they may get a little bit lost. They're a bit light. Watch oh, this. A darker one that might go on there so how many have I done one two three four I need one more thing oh she's a bit unhappy isn't she no I can't see me using a picture I'm not not in that mood today oh there's the wildlife ones I like these wildlife again um well actually that's the one where is it that's the stamp that I used on that one um, I am, oh, there is an Easter one. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, senior moment. Mushrooms, I like mushrooms. And um, these came from Etsy once again. I might put that on there. Now I'm just going to have a little bit of a flick and see if there's anything else in here that's calling to me because I, I may have more than one focal point. Like these again, these are stamps that are actually made from the washi tape that we've just used. So wasn't this on one of them? I think it was actually. No, let's stay with what I am. I haven't got time to be messing around because the clock is tick. Oh Lord, this is what happens. This is me trying to work quickly. And in trying to work quickly, what happens? Everything falls out. Right. I think this is just going to go on the floor behind me and I'll deal with it later. Right. So the ones I chose, I think this is a good candidate for that butterfly. Seems to work really well. I quite like these birds on here. Um, this is the one the mushrooms look good on. This is one of those... Um, things that I've just stuck down I like the look of that and I think this is where this is going to go but there's obviously more to go so where's that book gone right so let's get some sticky stuff down now I'm going to put this on I could use um art glitter glue at this point I'm just using Pritt stick uh, this glue stick is fine I don't have a problem with glue stick releasing and I've got some of my own journals that I've had for many many years and I've not had a problem with stuff coming off at all, so I'm not worried. Right, the rest is stickers. Now we know how much fun I am with stickers, but I do quite well with these ones. Says he, famous last words. My biggest problem with these stickers is when I take them off their backing, I lose the backing and then I find it that it's stuck to something. Now, as with washi, I'm going to put a bit of glue on the back of each of these as well. Purely personal choice. Some, some washi stickers are very, very sticky and don't need anything. Put it there. I think I want to put it there. Sorry if my arm is in shot. Okay, liking that. Let's get a new page because if washi sticks to a surface, it's stuck to a surface. And again. Yeah, I need to look back through my purchases to find out where I bought these washi stamps from because I do use them quite often and really enjoy using them. So. And there's a glue stick on the floor. I guess it's one of those days, guys. One of those days. Now bear with me, I have to go and find the loose stick. There we are. That's that's what happens when you have a bit of a limited space issue. Right, this one needs to just be stuck down. Um, I'm not sure whether I've got 
videos on how I made some of these things. I'll try and have a look. But to be honest with you, if you just look through my um, channel, you will probably find what you're looking for more visually than looking for a title. Because I always put into the thumbnail the project that I'm using for uh, using in the video or creating in the video. So just know that um, you'll probably be able to quickly look through and find something that way other than me saying what the title was because sometimes I get a bit creative with titles and I don't always know what I've written down. Right, I think that needs to go in there. Right, so that's everything stuck down. So, just wipe my fingers again. This glue is getting on my nerves today. Right, so here we are. This is what they look like so far. If you can't see them on screen, at least this gives you an opportunity for a bit of a catch up. Now the fun bit begins because now I can really go to town getting things on here that really will raise these to the next level. And that bit of paper is not going to raise it to the next level. So, right, I've got stuff on there. I think next I want to come in with some tickets. So, box of tickets. Um, I collect tickets as I go along. Um, Etsy, eBay, friends send them to me, anything like that. Right. I quite like that on there, actually. Um, there will be other sort of tickets and labels on these as well. I'm once again, I'm not, I'm not bothered that they're distressed. I'm just putting them down. And I know distressing isn't everyone's cup of tea. I do like it, but there is a time and a place for it for me. Right, another double one in grey. Actually, this one looks like it's calling for grey for me. I don't always need the things I stick on to fully stand out because just by putting this on here, yes, it will merge slightly into the background, but then that's just another layer of visual interest. That's that one. What other colours have I got in here? Sticky fingers, sticky fingers, sticky fingers. Gee, there's a pale one. I'll put that there because I'm probably going to put a number across there. Yes, another number. I like numbers. I like numbers and I like words. Yeah, I want that down a bit. Right, that's got ticket. That doesn't have tickets. I thought I had rare tickets somewhere. Maybe I don't have rare tickets. Maybe I've used them all. So I'm just shuffling through this little tiny box here. That's one thing I do find very helpful um, when I'm storing stuff is I tend to limit my supplies by the space in which they fit into. So to prevent me buying 500, ticket, uh, 500 tickets, I have a small box. When the small box is about half full, I will then buy more, more tickets. But I don't need too many choices. For me, too many choices really mess with my head. Um, actually, I quite like the idea of this one on that one too. Um, really mess with my head. And I can't seem to make a choice if I've got too many options. And I think, in fact, I'm almost certain, last month that was the theme of the coffee with Kerry that I did. That's going to pop right on the edge of there. Up just fractionally. Um, so yeah, I try to limit the space that I'm storing my stuff into so that it forces me to stop buying stuff. Right, ticket, 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 ticket. Right, tickets are done. Right. Let's pull in some of these. Now this is just a whole load of numbers and stuff. Some of them are Tim Holtz, some of them are not Tim Holtz, some of them are just things I've snipped off the edges of other things. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip them out onto here because that's one disadvantage of having a small 
storage space is that I tend to not be able to see anything. So that's just, I quite like one of those. I'll pull out the ones I like and then I'll find where I want to put them. And we may revisit these again um, as time goes by. That was quite nice. Pull out a few more than I think I need, purely because I can. I'm quite liking that red 18. Is that a sticker? It might just be a vellum thing. Right, and then these can just go straight back into the little box. There you go. Oh, these little numbers here, by the way, are numbers that I've cut off the ends of these tickets. So, because I had a lot of those tickets, and sometimes raffle tickets is another thing that I'll cut numbers off. So, just because it gives me little numbers like this that I can use, because um, I like little numbers. Now let's pull these down here, so let's see where we're going with some of these, right? I did say this needed a number, not sure that's the number though. I'm not sure that needs a number at all, that might need a label. Right, okay, let's let's talk about this. So this one to me needs pink and red. So this little red sticker, this 14, if I don't stick it on something at some point, it'll just stay in that box forever and a day. Um, let's put it down by there. It means nothing to nobody. And I'm just putting that down there. I do think this needs to be on here somewhere. And that could potentially go right in the middle there. Just to cover up that line there. So that's where we're at with this one. Let's pull this one in. Right. There's a lot of blank space up there, but I do know that I'm going to be um, adding more stuff. I quite like the idea of that, actually. I think it needs to go by there. Um, I'm often asked, how do I know where things go? Um, I don't. I just do it. Um, and I think a lot of the secret of that is, is... If you do create a lot, you will find it easier to create more. And by that I mean, is the more you do art, the more art you can do. Um, so am I in shop for most of this? Pretty much most of this, um, except the blue book, which we know about. Um, so people will say, oh, how do you know where to put stuff? I only know through experience. So there you go, label and label, or number and number. Right, this one, this one could do with something quite bold, actually. That's the one. Um, and I'm a great believer in saying, just have fun, have a, have a play, make things work for you. Don't don't wait till you're ready to do something. Do it anyway. All right, there's going to be quite a bit down there. I know that. All right, this blue page is beginning to get sticky, sticky. All right, this one. This one needs help, as far as I can see. And I think it's this bit here that's really bothering me. So that can go across there. I know I've got sayings and labels to put in, so that will be corrected then, because that is another point that I really don't quite like at the moment. Don't quite la like. I can sure that that's correct English at this point in the day. I'm going to put this up the side because I feel it just needs it. So that's that one done. Right, this is another one that needs a bit of help. Um, I'm just going to stick these down because they've been pulled out. There's a two left and I'm just going to use the two on here. So I think this is another thing, guys. Don't overthink, which is such a hard thing to say to anyone. Um, I am so analytical in life. It, it stops me doing stuff. Um, however... Just to work quickly for me means that I can actually get stuff done. Um, and it works. Right. And if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. So, right. Let's see. So this is the one I just did. So right, let's pull these back in because I've got a feeling I may have got out of shot for some of that. Hopefully not too far out of shot. 
So this is where I'm up to at the moment. So we've done, we've done labels, we've done tickets, we've done numbers. Um, I do think I now want to go into um, more of this sort of ticket now. And again, I have a small box of these. Some of these are Tim Holtz, some are not Tim Holtz. They're, they're just tickets that have crossed my path. I quite like that red one. Let's just, I'm just going to add lib where I put some of these. Now I have got a couple of these that really do need larger elements on them. I'm not feeling that one there. Not sure about that one. Don't I like the green on this one? And I've got green on this one, so maybe that can go up by there. It's another red one. I quite like I'm drawn to these red ones today for some reason. I think I need to look at something slightly different to that colour. Five cents, that sort of. Falls to me. I'm not sure on which one there. That one, I think. Right, so I need two more. Mid one. We'll keep this out because obviously snip that off something. I'll need to use it up. Oh, there's a green one. That will go perfectly in there. That will go on there. I'm just going to take a little bit more of a look through these to see if anything else is calling to me. This one is calling to me. I think that's probably going to be it. Yes, yeah, so let's call it stop on that one. Um, I need to add that to somewhere and I think I'm going to do that first before anything else. Right, I'm just going to glue this little bit up, this piece of a ticket, and just find it a home. There will be naturally a piece on here that I go, oh, it just needs to go there. I think it just needs to go there. There you go. So just added to the bottom of that one. Well, I'm working on this one. Let's just get this ticket down before I lose this ticket as well. Quite light that across there. Not sure whether that was where it was in the first place, but that's where it's going to be now. Now you do not need to be as complex in your layering as I am. I just like I like anything I create. I'm, I'm it's funny because in life I'm kind of a minimalist. However, when it when I come to creating art or pieces, I like. I thought I had another one on there. No, maybe it was this one. Um, I like the complexity of abstract or really layered stuff because I like looking into things and wondering what the person who created it was trying to say. I, I like looking into the depth of someone's design. Um, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. I, I quite like the idea of maybe having that line there, which is green, match up with the edge of the line there. Let's get this last one on. Now, this is why I wasn't overly fussy about the background being blocky, should we say. Where did I put that? I think it must have gone there. That feels the right place. Right. Let's get rid of this really sticky page into the bucket. So where we're at so far is we're getting complex now. I know there's going to be something there. Again, that's the next one. We're getting to the point, guys, where we're pretty much almost, almost done. Now, at this point, I tend to add a word. 
um, and then once I put a word or a phrase and after I've done that I will then go on to labels to utilize other spaces. So box of labels. Now these are just bits and pieces that are stamped onto um, fabric or cut offs of stuff or trim stuff. There's even some in fabric on here in here. So I tend to just whenever I've got spare bits of anything I will just keep adding it to this. So let me just push that up to there so I can see these and then hopefully you can also see what I'm looking at. So another country. That's sort of kind of appealing to me at the moment. I think I'm going to put that on there. Just across there. Right. Don't look back in anger. Look forward in hope. I think I want that on there. Um, these are just stamps of collections and stuff like that. Just don't don't ask me where they're from. I couldn't. I can't answer that. Um, I like my washi tape. I tend to just collect stamps whenever I see them. I very often will go on to eBay and be part of an eBay auction to um, to buy stamps. And then what I'll do is when the stamps arrive, the ones I really like, I'll keep. And then the ones that I don't really are not my style, I will then put into a charity shop or a gift shop or something. I think that needs to go across there. Right. Keep smiling, that doesn't feel right to me at the moment. What's this one? Creativity is a ho is not a hobby, it's a way of life. Ain't that the truth? You can go over there. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes. Right, let's just see. Could be the word fabulous somewhere. No, that's the wrong word. That might be the right word though. Yes. Right, so that's me done with those. Let's move that to one side. Now, um, labels are something that I will um, distress the edges of. So I'm just going to distress the edges of these really quickly. And then I can get to gluing. So um, I do like to distress the edges of labels and words like this. Purely because they are, at the end of the day, the focal point or... If I was putting a word on something, I would expect that word to be read. Not R-E-D, but R-E-A-D. Um, just in case I confused anyone. So, around there. This one is a little bit white for me, but I'm not overly bothered by that. I might just... Give it a really little bit of a brush with the ink pad of uh, the ink sponge. There you go. Let's just knock that ever so slightly backwards. So hopefully this has been what I think you would have asked for because you haven't asked for it yet because you didn't know I was doing it. So, however, this is the sort of stuff I do get asked about. Um, can I decorate more? Can I show you what I do with the backgrounds I create? Um, obviously I can because I'm doing it now. I just, I like to take more time to decorate normally. Um, and I don't mean work slower. I just like to make, take a little bit more time with some of my decisions. And it could be that not could be that is one of the reasons why I don't I don't do a lot of decorating videos because I want times time to contemplate what I'm putting where if if it's for a special project um, I'm not as fast as some some of the creators out there and which is fine I'm, I'm not pressurized by that but I do feel if you're watching it Sometimes it can be a little bit boring if someone is humming and harring for 20 minutes before they decide what they're going to put down. Um, and that wasn't aimed at anyone specific whatsoever. That was just a generalised comment about the way I like to view things. I like to view a video that just gets on and gets it done. Um, pretty much because I think with all of us, um, time is precious. And... 
and time is precious. We need to get stuff done. We need to get it out the door. And I don't always have the luxury of taking a long time to do stuff. Right, let's just fold this over and then show you what they look like with the words on. So you see, that's getting there. Now we're on to the very next thing is the last bit I would do. But as you can see, it gets really complex with me. And this is how I built things up from the background to the foreground. So right, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use digital labels. Now you did hear me say I don't like digitals very much. I love labels, however, and Tracy Fox is one of my favorite um, digital makers as far as, well, almost everything Tracy Fox touches is fabulous. Um, and that's Tracy Fox from Love Junk Journals on Etsy. Um, Go and, go and look at her ephemera, her labels, everything that Tracy does, in my opinion, is stupendous. Right, I do have one with mushrooms on. That one has mushrooms on. So maybe that might have a mushroom one. Anything else in there that's mushroomy? It's really calling to me. I think that's the perfect one for there. Not sure that's the right place for it. Um, I want to say the majority of labels you're going to see me using in here are from one of her kits. It might be called Field Notes. In fact, I'm almost certain it's called Field Notes. I like this one. I'm not sure where I want to put it. So I'm trying to keep everything in, in shot at the same time as showing you. Right, there's a red one then. I seem to have had one of these that had red on it, which is this one. It's the wrong colour red. Confirmed. What's the confirmed say? Confirmed can go on there. I don't tend to use the bigger labels, but I think I've got an opportunity here to potentially use a couple of the bigger labels. That might be the perfect spot for that. Right. Has this one got a label on it? No, it doesn't. I don't really have a lot of blue on things. There's a little bit of blue on there. There's a little bit of blue there. Hmm, maybe we'll let that sit for a second. Also, um, this field note, I can't even tell you how many labels are in the kit. If you print it off, it's an obscene amount of labels you're going to end up with. Actually, I think if I take the blue one off here, pop that one up there. I will show you guys as I've been doing, as I've been doing as I go along. You will, you will see. You will see what I've done. I promise you. I'm just pulling the ones out that catch my eye. So that's got a label. That's got a label. That's got a label. That's got a label, that's got a label. I just need to see whether there's anything that is just absolutely must have it on this thing. And I think that's one I really want on there. Now I'm going to pull out a couple of the round ones. I find round tricky to cut, so I try to only cut the ones that I've got. I've got a craft punch for. Now, I fully admit this is probably not going to be everybody's taste in, in how they like their stuff to look. And that is completely and utterly OK. Um, and that's what makes us unique and different is the fact that we all create differently and we have different styles. I did see a place I wanted that. I've lost it. Oh, there it is. Maybe that's not the right place. Now, the other things I could have reached for, however, didn't, were things like um, postage stamps. I use, do use postage stamps very often. Um, that might go in there, actually. Right. Last little bits. I feel this needs a something and that needs a something. Not sure you saw me do that, but I apologise if I'm off shot. I think it's about time I reprinted these. I use them a lot. 
and I'm running low. I'll pick it up. Where's it gone? Come on. That little word field works for me. Field? Filed. <laughs> Can't read. Right, I think I just, there's this one bit. Um, hopefully it's in shot. There's this one area that just needs a something. I just can't find the something. I wonder if I pop you up there. No, it has to go there. It's weird, isn't it? You look and go, mm, that definitely needs somewhere. And it has to be there. Okay, I don't mind that on that angle. Right, I'm going to stop futzing now. Let's just put that by, or else we're going to be here forever now. Right, I'm just going to um, brush around the edges with distress and get these stuck down. And then I've got a few other little stages that I do to finish them off. I'll stick them down while I remember where I picked them up from. Um, I tend not to go all the way to the corners with the exception of things like that purely because, where's the other one, purely because I like to round the corners often uh, because if anything I've stuck down is going to come up at all I can almost guarantee it's going to come up in the corner where the process of putting it in and out of um, a pocket. So I'll show you these in a second guys. Pull this one in. So now I can spend possibly an entire day doing these and I know that sounds like a lot of time and it definitely is a lot of time but then when I've got a whole load of these made um, I only need to add one or two of these to a journal or a traveller's notebook which is what these are going to be for and and they're absolutely featured pieces within within the journal or within the project I'm using and what that means is I actually then can not dumb down but I can certainly use less ornate pieces elsewhere in the book. Um, another thing I would do too is with something this complex or this busy I would sign um, the back of the journal card um, or I've got a little stamp that says um, handmade by Kerry Griffiths. Um, I will do something like that because to me these are pieces of art. They're just absolutely and I think everybody should sign their work. Right, that can go to one side as well. Right, I'm not sure this really needs the edges round but if I've missed with my fussy fussy cutting then at least it gets covered. That was going to go in there. I'm, not, I'm wondering whether this needs to go up here, to be honest. Um, I didn't do the edges, did I? Um, don't forget, guys, this coming July, and it's July 2023 I'm talking about, um, I'm going to be announcing a monthly collage challenge with a bit of a twist. Um, Something I think will be popular. Uh, it is a monthly challenge because I find weekly challenges. I just don't get them done. I try. I mean, I did Margaret Miller, Marguerite Miller, sorry, for a whole year and absolutely loved it. However, the problem was I was getting myself so stressed because I was falling behind in it. So I'm going to do a monthly challenge. I'm not going to do a weekly challenge. So I've created one and I've spoken to Marguerite Miller to get some advice and I've explained my concept to her and she absolutely thinks it's wonderful. So, so any of you will go, oh, you just copy Marguerite Miller. No, actually, I talked to the lovely lady and got her permission. Not that I needed permission. Um, she was like, why are you contacting me? And I explained, she well, you don't need to do that. And I went, I know, but just out of respect, I think I, think I first learned about um, prompt um generated challenges 
from doing hers and I felt that out of respect that I, I should in return ask about it. So there you go. Anyway, it's just me and my little foibles. Right, let's put this down. I've got two to do on here and then I think, as I said, there's just a couple of more little stages to go. And these are finished. How am I doing for time? Okay, so it's about an hour. I was hoping to do an hour's video. Or should I say, I was hoping to not do more than an hour's video, is what I truly meant to say there. Now, I could come in again, which I must admit I'm tempted to do, but I'm conscious of the video time, so I don't want to do it. Um, but be aware that I would probably come back in and see if there's any little numbers that I might want to put somewhere. But I think we've got enough on those, so let's get rid of the glue book. Because we're done with the glue book, which means I get a bit more space on this counter. And I stop dropping things. I'm going to need that in a moment. So let's have a little look at the ones we've done and then we'll have a final tweak of them. So as you can see, lots going on there. I love that and the backs look good. Again, interesting. I like these. Um, do I class these as a masculine journal card? I do I regard them as just a non-sex um, journal card. Not keen with that right in the middle. But I think it's too late to do something about it. The only thing I do is cut the edge of this off and turn that into a journal card and that into a tag. I wonder. Let's do that, because this is going to bother me. I made a mistake of putting that smack dab in the middle, and I shouldn't have done. So, it's okay to change your mind, that's what I say. So I'm just going to cut right down the edge of that, that wording, that creativity. That makes me better, makes me better, makes me happy. And then I've got a nice little tag here as well. I'm okay with that. Um, I'm going to need to do something about that in a minute. Where have I put those? Um, can't remember where I put my little gadget. Right, let's just do this old school. So I'm just going to come in. I'm going to snip the corner off. Take it off. Turn it round. And snip that corner off. Right, there you go. I feel happier with that. That's better. Right, so that's one tag done. Now I've got a rounding punch here for round corners. I'm using the seven mil size. Um, it's kind of my favorite for rounding the corners on stuff that are going into pockets purely because it doesn't distract from, um, it doesn't distract from the overall design. I knew that wasn't gonna cut properly. So I've got just, it's still a little bit wet that piece. I might have to trim that one by hand in a minute. So um, I like rounding the corners, as I said, purely because with the in and out of pockets, it's usually the corners that get destroyed. If anything is going to be destroyed. This is also a reason I don't put stuff all the way to the corners, with the exception of stuff like this, which I know has got blank, blank area in it. So we're coming to the end, but hang around because I will show you a close-up of the ones that I did last night as well. And then that way, you've seen all of the makes. Where's that one that I did the dippy corner with? Maybe to give it one more try. Right, just take a little bit of a scissor. It's just not not quite rounded enough and a lot of it has to do with the fact that things are not fully dried there you go you're never going to know unless you tell somebody and i prefer you didn't so take that out of that so now i do come in and i do distress the edges sometimes i do front and back i'm not going to do the back today because it's already coffee dyed paper anyway. It was coffee dyed scraps that I used. 
so I'm happy with that. Yeah, these once these dry, they will become a bit firmer because I can feel these feel soft. And that's purely because just reckon how much Prit stick has been on here and how much glue is still drying between the different layers. Now, I believe if my memory serves me right, um, I'm part of a Facebook group called Makers of Mixed Media Art and Artists, and they do a monthly swap. And I think this month's topic is journal tags, um, or just tags, should I say. Um, I think the criteria is you have to make three tags I think it's in the theme of Valentine's. That would kind of make sense, I suppose. Um, and then you get allocated someone else who's in that challenge and you do the swap with them. So you may see me do something very similar in the month when I come to create the tags for that uh, that swap. So watch out for that one. It'll be on its way. Right. So the thing that we didn't expect to have, which was a tag. Oh, dropped on the floor. Oh, on the top. So all of these are backed. So that's the other one. Quite like that one. I like the way that turned out in the end. Um, larger ones. Now these I would use for a full page tuck or a belly band. See, all of those multiple layers actually do pay off. But when you look at it, you don't see all of the layers immediately. You look into it and then you see them. What I'm looking for people to look at is the wording or maybe the images. I like that one. But I like this technique. And that was a smaller one that didn't end, didn't start that way, but ended that way. So those are the ones from today. And let's have a look at the ones I did yesterday. So this, see, these are more a little firmer. Now this one will make people smile if they if they know PM Artist Studio. I put it's okay to not be okay because I put the eight upside down. That should have said eighty six, and I thought it said ninety eight. For those people in the know, you're going to know one of one of the artists involved in PM Artist Studio put the eight upside down on something. And we all had a good laugh about it. And here I go. I did the same thing. So there's that one. Um, this was a sticker from a sticker book. Um, I needed to use it up. So that's why that got onto there. Um, this was actually just back of another bit of backing paper. Um, I put a fish on there for no other reason than it was the perfect thing to fit there. And there you go, bunny. Hello, Gail. There you go. There's a bunny one. So hopefully you enjoyed that. That was today's video. Um, have fun with it, guys. And I will say that I pretty much need to wait till next time to have fun with you. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.